Today on the Road Testament, we reveal the Mercedes Concept A-Class and two new guest co-hosts, both resolving the problem of co-hosts with no women in their lives, including Leo Parente of Shakedown Fridays, <laughs> best automotive news show online, including my own, and Michael Musto, a proper journalist with ride lust and um, owner of many cars, lover of many cars. So, the Mercedes Concept A-Class. Guys, first footage we've ever seen. JF, you had to go first on this because you're excited, excited about it. You're a graduate of, um, what engineering school is that? If I tell no. Pack full of fans of this car. Why do you like this concept? If you look at the design, I think it's the first new car we've seen from Mercedes in the past decade that actually I can get excited about. And I'm what? not just saying that from an engineering standpoint. I think it looks quite good. Wait, do you think this is a more important and exciting than the CLS was when that came out? Well, two different realms. I think it's a it's Mercedes introducing themselves into a whole new realm. They're, they've rebranded the A-Class since it will be coming to the U.S. Now, this is a concept that's due out uh, uh, at Shanghai at the Shanghai Auto Show, but the production version is coming in two years, and it will be sold here in the U.S. I think the fact that they've kind of rebranded the A-Class is a very good thing. It certainly is a very good thing if you uh, love design, because the old A-Class looked like you know, a kid's bowling shoe. Uh, musto, <laughs> musto, you, you're a big guy. I mean, you're, I mean, yeah. you're a tall guy. Tall guy. Talk to me about this car. <laughs> you know, I think it's, from a design standpoint, it's, it really is a, a sharp looking car. You know, it's got beautiful lines to it. And I think that the biggest hurdle, the biggest challenge that Mercedes is going to have is where their price point lays with this thing. If, they're, if, they, if it comes over and they think they're going to price it at thirty-five dollars or $40,000 and it doesn't have thirty-five dollars or $40,000 worth of, worth of performance, it's dead. It's, I think you're going to go the road of, you know, the small, the 318, mm -hmm. or, you know, that came out a couple of years ago, well, I guess early 90s. Yeah, the C-Class compressor. C-Class. Yeah. And then, um, you know, the Mercedes, the C230 from nine or 2002 or mm -hmm. whatnot. Yeah. So... Leo? From a corporate standpoint, I, I see them trying to do three things with this car. One, showcase the new design ethic, mm -hmm. as you guys have said, then boring, freshen that up. They're putting design on a small car to make the entry-level uh, entry level car cool again. And you talked about the A. Bringing the smaller car, an entry car, into America. Right now, the smallest Mercedes you can buy here is the C. Mm -hmm. And three, I'm assuming, showcasing technology to address this whole green, efficient car thing. That everyone's going to deal with. Well, let's start off with the facts. It's it's uh, a front wheel drive car, 210 horsepower. We don't know weight, and uh, I think that one of the one of the what are some of the quotes that they had? What was the, the word you hate in the press? Dynamism. Place? Dynamism. <laughs> but it's a two plus two. I, yeah, it's a two plus okay. two. It's got the same designer. The guy who designed this is actually the same designer who designed the SLS, which yes, is, I think is a good thing. It is a good thing. Well, and you can see, well, you can definitely see elements of the SLS in the car, especially in the front yeah. end of this thing. You can see a lot of the F800 uh, concept as well. The kind of, and it's got a very Mazda Fiori look well, to it as well. It has a very Hyundai Sonata look to it too. Looks like a Scirocco. That's the best example. It of looks like yet. a European Scirocco. Yeah. Which is a car that Americans really, really want that we're not going to get. And it's, it would probably be half the price of what this thing is going to stick her at. Yeah. So, you know, do you want? Like I said, I, I think it's a good-looking car. I just don't know if they're going to be able to get through that challenge of selling a small car for a premium price. So you already have me asking two questions of the of the group. One, is it stylish enough to attract you to the small car? And number two, are, does it look like a Mercedes to you? You know, uh, I'm actually I'm going to say something really out of left field. If this thing is under thirty. They have a chance to sell some just because it's a Mercedes under 30. And there are people who are aspirational who are not going to confuse it for a Hyundai Sonata or anything else with cut lines and flame surfacing. But if it's over 30, they may be making a brilliant decision. And in fact, deliberately attacking the niche of current Mercedes owners to whom, for whom there is no prestige small car. I think they should only market this car to existing Mercedes owners. Price it at 35 because I think they will own that niche and if they risk a ton of money trying to sell this to anybody else it's a complete complete unknown because if you're a mercedes owner you want to have more mercedes in your life you own one of these great if you're a mercedes owner who sees a billion of these things going around you're not going to want to buy one because you're, you're a mercedes owner and th the worst thing could happen is the brand is diluted among people who for whom the brand means something so first time buyer of Mercedes, well, A class, is not going to care if it's diluted because for them, they just move up, mm -hmm. right? So, do we? Let me ask the question. Uh, how, I think we all agree that we like the design. Mm -hmm. I think we like um, uh, the 
fact that it's something new out of Mercedes and it's replacing a, a pre-existing A-Class that we all hated, what about from the performance standpoint? You know, we had the conversation about the CRX. It doesn't really know what it is. What would you look the at CRZ. this car? CRZ. CRZ, well, yeah. CRZ. What do you think this car really is? I, I think it's transportation for people who live in urban areas that want to have that that little bit of elevation as far as status goes in, in a car. Yeah, it can't be light enough to really be a performance model. If it's a Mercedes... 210 horsepower? Yeah. If it's a Mercedes, that means part of the technology is going to go into the strength, the safety. That's right. It's, it's going to weigh something. It's going to be a yeah. chubby little yeah. car. At the, yeah. And we have to keep in mind this is still a concept. We don't know what the production version is going to look like. Correct. But that said, this ver this this concept yeah. has the pedestrian crash safety well, standards. It it's going to be a way above that. It's a Mercedes. I, I think you know? we all agree. Like you said, styling is great on this car. It's a good look. If I saw it on this road, like, that's yeah, a good looked, looking you know, it car. It looks cool. That's a good looking car. But, what? and again, it, it comes back to usability. Price, economy. Mm -hmm. That's what. Those are the three factors, the three challenges that Mercedes really going to have to press on people, you know. And I think Alex made a very good point. If you're a Mercedes owner mm -hmm. and you want something that gets a little better mileage and you, but without you the feeling it. of going down, yeah, you can buy this car and feel okay for mm -hmm. thirty five. For thirty five, yeah. If the, if Audi can sell enough A threes to justify a lot more A threes, they can sell them for thirty five to thirty seven. Then Mercedes can too. Absolutely. Leo, you're shaking your head. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fundamentally agreeing. I, I'm thinking of two things. I, I think there's a statement that Mercedes is making here, showing styling, showing a personal transportation, not a performance car, a personal transportation car that's going to be stylish. showcasing their fuel efficiency in a stylish way. And who knows, they may put the hydrogen technology in this. If they've shrunk it down so much for the B class, maybe this, maybe this okay. could be a hydrogen... Uh, you know, small hatch. But what's going on in my mind is what you guys are, are kind of alluding to is it over-promising and under-delivering. You know, everyone's using style to sell a new platform. Someone in Korea or, or Germany is going to cringe when I compare this to the Hyundai Sonata. <laughs> yeah. but which, the is Hyundai, car. which is yeah, a good which car. Which is a good car. Stylish to attract people away from Camrys and God knows what. But it's delivering in terms of its performance, whether it's the Turbo 4 or the Hybrid. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a question of show me is this thing going to deliver in terms of car it. performance versus yeah that's mercedes mercedes's problem almost that the expectation upon them is so high every time absolutely that they can never scream yeah. but now marketer again they've changed their marketing campaign to basically lay down the gauntlet for themselves so they've got no choice but to deliver here. well they can't screw this up they can't screw it up. okay because look what happened 10 years ago smart well smart well the, the <laughs> smart conceptually was a great car. The car was a pile of crap, though, which is why nobody bought it. Or they bought it immediately, and then they said, well, these cars are a pile of crap. We're not buying any more. <laughs> okay? So with this car, if you're going to get a Mercedes, if you walk into a Mercedes showroom, I expect my quality to be here. Right. I expect my quality to be here. I expect my everything about that car to be here. I don't, don't want to walk into a Mercedes dealership and right. get a car that's here. Right? I like don't this, want that. I'll I, buy a Hyundai. I yeah. want to like this car for two reasons. It's laying down the gauntlet. It's saying we're going to be stylish, and they need to be. And it's saying, we're going to deliver a Mercedes-quality car at any size. And I hope you're right on their behalf. And, right, exactly. and you know something? I, I think they should price right. it starting at 35 And the base model should not be too base. Because it's got to sit in the same you know, showroom as an SLS and an S-Class. And that could work. Too so, cheap might also be a problem. Okay. Let's wrap this up. Yeah, we have to wrap this up. So here's my question to you guys. <laughs> Does a car like this tarnish the Mercedes reputation? Absolutely not. No. I think I think the design and styling kind of hold itself. I think it all depends on the interior quality. Because outside it looks great, and if they stick them all in silver on the showroom floor, it'll look great. If you get in that car and something feels chintzy, it's a problem, and no one's going to buy it. No, not the current owners of Mercedes, and new people are going to come in and say, "Well, Mercedes is not all it's cracked up to be." Right. So, with that, let's wrap this up. Good episode. I think we we like the design, but I guess the production version is. They've, they've got challenges. Graduates yeah. of Stevens they've Engineering School, rejoice. <laughs> that was the road test. <laughs> Thank you, Dick. <laughs> <laughs>